right, so it is loading up and going to the Facebook page. Okay, perfect. So we should be good to go. All right, so we are live. We're live on Zoom. We're live on Facebook. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen Broyles, and I've got with me my good friend and fellow health coach, Michelle Ward, and she is a certified health coach with a master's of science in health coaching and applied nutrition. And I'm actually going to let her share her story of how she got into natural health and health coaching. And I also want her to share how she got into um, wine as well. So, so Michelle, um, tell us a little bit about your journey. What led you into natural and alternative wellness and becoming a health coach and then um, getting into the wine industry? Well, thanks again for having me today, Jen. I'm so excited to be on with you guys. Um, so yeah, my journey started almost about 20 years ago um, in 1999 when I was, uh, my husband and I were trying to get pregnant and um, that, you know, I, the, all the tests showed that everything was fine with me and him and all that, but I still was not um, conceiving and it's a very frustrating process. And, um, but I decided to do the, go the medical route and um, get on some medicine um, to increase my fertility. And it literally made me crazy. Like I was for about three weeks, not myself. And so I just took myself off of it. And I said, you know, um, whatever is meant to happen will, ha will happen. But it was right when the internet was kind of emerging and I was, um, and I had this job where I was at a computer all day long and there were, you know, lulls um, in the day. So I started searching the internet for alternative ways to conceive. And I have no idea why, because I wasn't like into health really at the time. I had a degree in finance and um, I learned about, you know, juicing and um, just getting nutrition into, you know, just, um, and, and, and all these different things that were not profound, but they kind of were <laughs> at the time. And so I start. I bought a juicer and I started juicing and um, I stopped eating processed food and sugar. And within about three months of that, I became pregnant and um, had my daughter, uh, Tessa, who is now a freshman in, um, in college. So, but at the time it was like, is there something really to this? And so I, I continued um, digging and researching and learning and just kind of uncovering some secrets and some, you know, some things about the food industry and the pharmaceutical industry and all these things and testing everything, every theory along the way. I've been raw, raw vegan. I've been vegetarian. I've been, you know, I've done everything, keto, paleo, all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I just, I love learning and I love kind of experimenting on myself. And so I decided to get my nutrition degree because people were coming to me for health. And, um, and so I got my nutrition degree and then decided to go on and get my master's. And so this is kind of all culminated over the, um, the last 20 years. Um, but the whole wine thing, I love wine and everybody I know loves wine. <laughs> um, but every time I would drink wine, this is probably about seven or eight years ago, um, I started getting these rashes on my face, like, and my nose would turn bright red and my chin would turn bright red. And um, I'd wake up the next morning. I just, my teeth would be purple because I'm a red wine drinker. I wouldn't sleep well. And it didn't really matter if I had one glass or an entire bottle, but <laughs> um, it just, it always, it, it would happen that way. So I started kind of doing some research. There wasn't a whole lot of information out there. So I, I learned that maybe European wines were better. And so I made the switch. Um, and had better luck with the European wines, but every once in a while, I would still get the rashes. I'd still not sleep well, um, you know, all that. And not to mention, I felt like kind of bloated and gross the next day. And um, so I kind of, I stopped drinking wine for a while, which was really sad because, <laughs> you know, uh, or I'd have like a vodka soda or something like that, which just doesn't, to me, doesn't have the same like um, allure. Yeah. But um, anyway, I got invited to this wine tasting last year and I was like oh, okay and I'd heard it was clean wines and um and so I went and I found out all about Scott and Cellar wines and I totally was like okay this is something that I want this is something I want to tell my clients about I actually did not go into it thinking I was going to be consultant I told the girl that was there at the point that was hosting the party I was like I'm gonna send all my clients to you and so anyway um I drank that night um first time I'd had wine in a while 
and I didn't, I didn't have poor sleep and I, and I woke up, I felt great. I didn't have the rashes and all that stuff. So I was kind of sold and the story is what sold me. So that's kind of how I got from there to here. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I love that story because I, like I have over the past couple of years, really um, kind of changed course into clean wine as well. Um, I was the same way, like, especially for me with red wine, if I had more than a glass of red wine, I usually got a headache. I didn't sleep well. It just, it didn't sit well with me. I seem to tolerate white wine better, but even still, it was like, I had like a one glass limit, you know, and, um, I still don't drink much more than that at any given mm -hmm. time. Like I like to have a glass of wine with dinner, um, sometimes, but I know with like certain wines, if I know it's like a clean, high quality wine that if I am out at, you know, a happy hour or a long dinner or out with friends or something like that for the evening, um, if I'm drinking good quality wine, I can have more than one glass and actually feel fine the next day. Like mm -hmm. it's such a difference. And, um, and so, so yeah. And, and one thing I do want to talk about, um, during this conversation is the difference in all the clean wine companies out there, because it is growing, um, which I'm thankful for, right? Like, I mean, something needs to change because, and, and I want you to talk about like commercial wine and what's so bad about it versus like what to look for in a clean wine. But first I know you landed on Scout and Cellar, which is definitely a growing, growing brand. Um, and I am, I'm familiar with it. Like, mm -hmm. cause I've seen, like I've talked to people that are involved and really through you learn more about it, but I'd love to hear the story behind it, how it got started and what makes it um, a reliable choice when it comes to sourcing wine. Okay. So yeah, great, great question. And you know that, um, the mother of invention is necessity, right? Or, um, I always get that wrong, but you know, this, the mother of, inve of invention is, um, comes out of the need of your own. And so Sarah Shadnix, um, who is our founder, um, and level three sommelier, she um, actually refers to herself as a recovering um, attorney. She was um, a lawyer, her husband's a lawyer, um, and she decided that she really wanted, she loves wine and she really wanted to become a sommelier. So as she's studying to become a sommelier, one of the requirements is that you drink a lot of wine, you know? And so she noticed that through her, through the studying um, and through her coursework, that she was getting headaches. And so, she, you know, she kind of tells the story. It's kind of funny. She's like, well, so I thought, well, maybe instead of having three glasses of wine, I'll have two, you know, but she, she started titrating down even to the point where she was just drinking a quarter of a glass of wine and she would wake up with these massive migraine-ish headaches. And so, you know, clearly that is not good if that's what her, you know, if that's the um, career path that she's going to be taking, she can't be feeling awful all the time. So the attorney in her and the, you know, the ability to ask the right questions and research um, went to work. So she started contacting um, wineries um, and talking to winemakers and asking them about the process and started uncovering some of those dirty little secrets of, mm. the, of the wine um, industry. And she found out that one bottle of wine can contain up to 250 chemi chemicals, mm. that um, there could be synthetic pesticides, think, you know, glyphosate um, runoff in your, in your bottle of wine. Um, there's up to 16 grams of added sugar after fermentation. Um, there's dyes, that's why you get the purple teeth. There could be um, enzymes added to speed up the fermentation process. So it makes it basically, a lot of commercial wines are just wines that are created in a lab. Yeah. Not to mention that um, if you buy a certain wine, even like, you know, a really nice wine, like Silver Oak or Farniente or, in, um, you know, or Mayomi or any of these, you know, commercial wines that you see um, uh, massive um, amounts of, they, when you buy that, you want the same taste every single year, right? Like you, if mm -hmm. you buy it today or you buy it five years from now, you want that same exact yeah. consistent flavor. Well, the only way to do that is really to produce that in a lab type environment, right? Yeah. Um, because, you know, grapes are, it's, wine is very tricky. Um, um, growing grapes is very tricky because there are things that are, we can't control, like um, the environment, the, how much rain there is, how much, you know, if there's going to be a freeze, if, you know, the harvest actually comes in. And so, 
um, that's that's when um, if you know if there's if there's trouble in the growing season, then you then you may not have you know your wine unless you can reproduce it in a lab. So point, yeah. Yeah, and so, so what Sarah set out to do, um, and this all started as a small concept that she was just gonna do for her friends and family. Like she just kind of came up with this idea of like, well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start finding some clean wines. Um, I'm gonna visit di different wineries. I'm gonna say, I want you to produce, you know, can you produce a wine in this way where it doesn't have all this stuff in it? And basically, um, she, I think she had an initial, um, initial agreements with eight different wineries. Um, when they went, when we went live two years ago. And um, all these wines are, uh, every batch is double lab tested from independent labs um, in California. So um, it's, you know, third party tested for purity and they have to meet certain strict standards, which are stricter than American standards, which is not very strict and European <laughs> standards combined. And um, so they tell, um, the te they tell the story of the day that they were supposed to launch. I think they had 175 founding members. And so we had 175 people ready to go out and tell all their friends and family um, about this wine they were selling. And there were supposed to be eight wines. They're all pre prepared. One of the wines did not pass the test. I mean, like by a hair. Sarah yeah. tells a story. She's like, I mean, it barely didn't pass. But she said that was like where we had to put a stake in the ground. And, um, you know, because we're all about transparency and we're about, um, you know, um, integrity. And she said, if we would have taken that um, to market, even with that tiny little, you know, um, it was just not even that much, um, that would say something about us that set the tone for the, mm -hmm. you know, for the business. And she said, I can't tell you how many people were so mad at me. Like I was, you know, but I mean, <laughs> you know, you got, and so anyway, um, from there on, um, they started adding more and more wines. And when I started in February of 19. Um, I think we had like 25 wines. We have right now around almost 60 wines um, and they're from all over the world. And so she visits different wineries around the world. I think there's, and they're boutique wineries. And so the thing that I love about that also is it supports a small farmer, um, people who have always made wines the way wines are supposed to be made. And, um, but they just don't have the marketing dollars of the big, you know, of the big guys. And so they can't get the word out and they don't have the distribution um, uh, you know, the dis distribution that Scout and Seller now has. Um, and so I just, and I love it from that standpoint. And it's a woman owned company. And so, <laughs> so that's kind of always cool. good. <laughs> yeah. So um, I hope that answers your question. It does. That no, too. that gives me a lot of insight. I love that. And yeah, it speaks to the integrity. If um, you're launching a business and things don't, a, a product doesn't pass to your specifications you don't try to cover it up, right? Like right. so many companies would. Um, it's not, you know, the bottom line is not the most important. It's it's the quality of the product and um, getting the right the right product to the customers. Um, so I love that. I really love that. Um, so I I got into clean wine a couple of years ago when I heard a podcast with uh the owner of dry farm wines Todd um, so, White. Oh, yeah huh yeah Todd White uh -huh. um and like some of the stuff he was talking about commercial wines just blew my mind like at the time I had no idea and it was a lot of the stuff that you were just saying like you know how they add sugar back to the wine after the fermentation process how they add a bunch of additives they add sulfites um all the pesticides and the glyphosate one thing he mentioned um, that was just incredibly shocking is that, um, and I don't know if, if he said this or if the, um, the podcast host said this, but, um, so in California, like in the Napa, Napa Valley air, area, apparently, um, the rate of breast cancer is like 15% higher than anywhere else in the country. And they've mm -hmm. linked that to the pesticides that are being sprayed on the grapes. Mm -hmm. like how outrageous is that yeah you know? and so I personally try to just avoid California wines unless I know it's like a truly legit quality tested wine because I mean like those pesticides spread right to right. like surrounding areas and I don't want that in anything I consume and I know like it's really hard to avoid um you know any amount of contamination but 
like if I can control it to an extent I want to. Right. So that was really amazing. Um, but so, so with Scout and Cellar wines, do, do most of them come from outside of the U S or are there some national, um, wines as well? That's a great question. And a lot of people will look that have some kind of knowledge about, you know, um, wines as a matter of fact, I was talking to a lady the other day who, um, was asking about our wine. She goes, well, and she saw that I had some California wines. Um, so uh, she's like, oh, we've decided we're not going to drink any U.S. wines anymore. I was like, that's a very wise choice whenever you don't know for sure, mm-hmm. you know, um, what you're drinking. But we do actually have, we have wines from Chile, from Argentina, from France, from Italy, um, from Austria. But we also have a lot of wines from Oregon, um, and we have some from California, but again, they are all independently lab tested for purity. And if they don't pass the SNP test, if they don't pass our standards, they are not brought to, brought to, um, to market. And, you know, just because a wine is European wine doesn't necessarily mean it's purity. I mean, it probably didn't have as many of the chemicals and all that stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean it didn't have added sugar or dyes or added sulfites, you know? So, um, so yeah, you can find, a California wine that is clean, but unless we have a, we have a sticker on our um, wines that say Scout and Cellar, unless it has a sticker, you don't know really what's in your wine. Because if you ever look at the back of a bottle of wine at the ingredient list, what does mm-hmm. it say? Nothing. <laughs> contain sulfites. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wines are going to contain sulfites yeah, regardless. Just, right. Right. Any but, fermented product is going to have sulfites naturally. Right. Um, so but, that doesn't give you much information. <laughs> exactly. So our Scout and Cellar wine, the Scout and Cellar wines, um, usually they're always less than 100 parts per million, um, right. you know, in a bottle, usually less than 50. But like a commercially produced wine, to kind of give you some context or perspective, is up to 350 parts per million. Yeah. And people ask, like, well, why does that happen? Well, so... Um, when our when our when the grapes are um, when the grapes are picked, our grapes are hand picked, not by machine, and they're picked at night. So mm-hmm. when they're put in the barrels, they are in. It, it's not like the heat of the sun is not barreling down or you know um, onto the the grapes um, like they are in a regular vineyard. Well, when the heat comes, you know, and um, the grapes start fermenting um, under the in in the heat. Mm-hmm. Um, sulfites have to be added to kill bacteria. So sulfites are added to each level of the process or each um, you know, point in the process of winemaking in a commercial winemaking pr- um, process. And so that's why the sulfites are so high. And a lot of people think, well, I just can't drink wine because of the sulfites or because of the tannins. Mm-hmm. Well, the tannins are, the tannins are just a naturally occurring um, part of the, the, um, the um, skin of the grape. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very natural thing. And sulfites are natural, except when they're unnatural. <laughs> and so, um, I, you know, I've heard it said um, that if you can, if you can eat, you know, um, dried apricots and not have a have a response, then it's probably not the sulfites that are in your wine. It's probably all the other junk that's in there. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. It really is a shame. Like, there's no label requirements around. Mm-hmm wine or alcohol in general, I guess, like sugar content, added ingredients, all that stuff would be nice to see on a label. Um, do y'all have certain requirements for the amount of sugar in a wine? Uh, Cause I'm a big fan of like the lower the sugar, the better. So. Right. So our wines have two grams or less of residual sugar. Okay. Is that per bottle? Per bottle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And so that's, that's a half a teaspoon for an entire bottle. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. And that's, I mean, that's the way wine should be. It should be fermented to the point where there's like very little sugar remaining, you know? Right. Exactly. So that's great. That's great. So, um, so t- speak to, um, tell us a little bit about, um, the difference between like an organic wine. Like if I find wine that says organic, or I find wine that says, um, that it's certified biodynamic, Um, you know, are those good options? Um, is biodynamic better than organic and is clean crafted better than all of it? Speak to that a little bit. Well, I might be a little bit biased about whether clean crafted is better than all of it, but I would say, um, okay. So organic just typically means that the, the grapes that were used in the fermentation process are organic. It doesn't necessarily mean that 
and it doesn't necessarily mean there's not sugars or dyes added or extra sulfites added along oh, the process. Okay. And it doesn't mean that, um, that, the, that the grapes were handpicked, um, you know, the, and, and it doesn't mean that it doesn't have all the other like kind of junk that can end up in your, um, in, in the wine making process whenever a, um, when a machinery is used. I mean, think of machine, a machine doesn't know how to go and just pick it. It gets everything right. Mm -hmm. So I've heard that you can actually have birds and stuff like that in your, in your wine. And that's so sad. <laughs> I know it's so sad because the machine just goes and like does what a machine does. Um, anyway, um, that's off point, but so organic can just simply mean it's the, the grapes used were organic. Doesn't necessarily speak to the process at all. Okay. Biodynamic. Um, I, you can have, we, all of our wines are either biodynamic or sustainable and um, organic um, and they're vegan, which we can talk about that in a second because who would not think that a wine would be vegan kind of thing. But um, so um, biodynamic is really great for the environment as you know, right? And so, um, and sustainable um, practices for growing grapes and, um, and uh, making wine are, is very, um, it's good for the environment. Um, and so, yeah, I would say that that, that those are important markers to look at. Yeah. Um, now vegan, um, all of our wines right now are vegan except for one. We have one um, from uh, Mendoza, Argent Argentina that is not vegan. But um, I was looking it up. I was like, why, how could a wine not be vegan? Well, apparently they, you, in the fining process and the filtering process, they can use bones and fish bladder to kind of get some of the impurities out. And so that would make a wine not vegan. Yeah. And the, the thing about wine is, is that everybody, we are so, we are becoming so hyper um, aware of how we need to live healthier lives, right? So we're eating organic food and we're, um, we're eating pastured eggs and we're, you know, we're, we're eating antibiotic free and steroid free um, meats and looking for grass fed and grass finished and blah, 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 blah. No one thinks about what's in their wine. They yeah. just think it's fermented grapes. And it's so like, it's such a, it seems like such a scam. Like it's like, you know, yeah. But, um, and because there's not an ingredient um, label or, um, you know, ingredients on the label that how would you even know? Yeah, you know? exactly. You don't, unless you do your research or you have someone to help you. Um, I want to, I want to speak to the vegan thing real quickly because I found this kind of amusing when, um, so one of I, we spend time in Southern California and, um, there's a restaurant we go to there that we absolutely love and everything is like just beyond organic, like some of the cleanest stuff ever. And they, they serve only really clean wine too. And um, they've done a couple of wine tastings where like, you know, someone like a representative from the vineyard or the winery will come in and speak and teach. And um, in this area of California, everyone is very like hyper health focused. Mm -hmm. And um, there was someone there at the tasting that was asking if the wine was vegan. And um, they said, yes, it's vegan. Like we, you know, we don't use like, kind of like what you said, like those byproducts yeah. um, and any of the processing. And then someone said, well, if you really think about like how, like the whole process of winemaking, especially this biodynamic, then you got to look at the soil right. and there's like manure in the soil exactly. that comes from an animal, you know? So technically yeah. <laughs> it may not be vegan. And I was like, Oh my God, that's getting really specific. Then that means like no fruits or vegetables are vegan either. Exactly. You know? like, so, can't eat anything. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, that is like the cycle of life right there. Like yes. let's not go overboard. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. So, and it, and it can be easy to kind of get in, like, you know, get caught in that vortex. Yeah. You have to really kind of try to pull yourself out and decide what's really important to you. Exactly. Like, you know? Exactly. Um, so. Yeah. No, I just found that amusing. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> We're going really deep I never deep thought here. about that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, so, so you explain the difference between organic and biodynamic and, and all that, which is, is super helpful. So, um, so if someone's wanting to consider, you know, maybe they've cut out wine because they just thought they couldn't tolerate wine at all. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, oh, well, maybe it's the type of wine I'm drinking. Like, um, can you find some of these wines at stores? And I mean, are they available in retail? Um, Scout and Cellar wines are not available um, retail and, um, 
and you can like if you go to a grocery store if you didn't want to commit to like you know purchasing you know four bottles or we we our shipping is free for ninety nine dollars or more and then we also have wine club you can buy a la carte or you can do wine club but if you did if you weren't ready to commit to that you can go to a grocery store like I would say go to Whole Foods or even um, you know just a more health minded grocery store and look for the European wines like the Italian wines the um, French wines. Um, Austrian. Austrian wines actually have the lowest, like they're one of the better wines to choose. Yeah. Like you could probably go buy an Austrian wine and be totally fine. Um, and it's probably the European wines probably aren't going to have all the, the junk because they have such strict, strict standards, you know? Um, but, um, but if you want to know for sure, absolutely for sure that your wine is double lab tested and that, you know, it's been, it's been tasted by a level three sommelier before, you know, mm -hmm. before she even decides, um, if we're, if we're going to carry the wine, then the scout and cellar is the way to go. Yeah. But you know, there are like you, you talked about um, dry farms wine and I'd actually ordered some wine from dry farms and um, their wine, they, their claim, you know, their claim to fame or whatever their marketing is that all these wines are dry, um, all the wines that are produced um, from farms that are, um, that are dry farmed mm -hmm. or from vines that are dry farmed, which basically means that the, the roots um, can go, the roots, seek water down you know down 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 in the soil because they're not and, and it's just irrigated through the rainwater and um not watered um with you know any kind of um what do you say like a uh, you know a watering thing it's a, yeah <laughs> a watering system yeah um, so it's better for the environment it's better for the um you know for the vines and all that stuff because they are just healthier mm -hmm. um and more nutrient dense but um and they're good wines. To me, they're a little lighter than what I like. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, um, and their lab testing is not as um, rigorous as ours. They do one lab test. And um, I have heard they spend about $150 per batch on their wine, um, uh, on their um, testing, whereas Scott and Seller spends $500 per batch. So wow. we just have, we just have higher standards. Um, but it's a dry farms would definitely be a better choice or thrive market. I think is now yeah. doing, um, their wine clubs as well. They, um, it's a better choice than just going and buying it off the, the shelf. And I think the yeah. price points are all about the same between the three clubs. So, yeah, they are. I feel like they're a very reasonable price mm -hmm. for a good quality wine. So, right. Um, and it's changed. Like since I started nine months ago or however long that ago that was, um, the wines were super expensive. I mean, I had friends are like, the wines are good, but I'm not going to spend 35, $45 on a Tuesday night bottle of wine. I'm like, that was a tough selling point. Well, the, um, we've now gotten to a point where vineyards are approach are coming to Sarah saying, how do we get compliant? And, um, how do we meet your standards? And so our, our, um, our inventory has grown, um, and the selections have grown. So our price point is now anywhere like we have wines for 20 up to 72 but the average price is around 24 25 dollars a bottle oh that's great yeah. yeah yeah that's very comparable to the others so mm -hmm. that's awesome um so as a health coach um yeah. so what is your wine drinking practice and what do you recommend to your clients and i know probably every client is different based on health issues but um, where does wine fit into a healthy lifestyle? So to me, okay, so I'm all about making different and better choices. Um, I tried the rigidity of being, you know, trying to be perfect um, in my own health and lifestyle um, for years. And it just was um, soul, you know, sucking. Like it just, you know, it's just not, it's not a fun way to live. And so a lot of my clients are women in their forties um, and older who have basically they, they have given everything to their family, their friends, the volunteer organizations, um, their church and all, you know, everything. And now they're finding themselves, um, their purpose and their identity has been kind of caught up in, um, in their family and their, you know, and their kids and all that stuff. Their kids are leaving school, uh, leaving for college. Um, I've got one and, um, I've got another one leaving next year. And so, um, they they're willing to they they now want to like kind of get back in shape kind of rediscover who they are and all that stuff and they're willing to give up food before they give up wine yeah <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing 
And so, um, you know, a lot of my clients will drink a glass or two every night. And I think that's fine as long as it's the right wine. Some clients are like, you know, maybe just have a glass a week or something like that. I think it's all bio-individualistic and, you know, where it fits in. But I think that you can fit wine into any kind of healthy lifestyle as long as you are not over-consuming. You can still even over-consume like, you know, good wine, you know, um, so, um, and, um, and not depriving yourself of the things that you love, the things that bring you joy. Um, like I said, whenever I replaced my wine with the vodka drink, it just was, ugh, it wasn't the same, you know, kind of thing. Um, and so for me, I mean, I'm constantly tasting wine because that's like what I do. I, I call myself a health coach by day and a wine consultant by night. Um, <laughs> but I tried, I really do try to limit, um, the amount of wine that I drink every two, you know, maybe three, four times a week, just because I know that um, for me, I, I can, I can tend to drink an entire bottle instead of just a glass. I don't have that much discipline around that. So, because I just love the way it tastes. Um, but I think it varies for, from person to person, but I am definitely against ever telling somebody not to do something, but let's find an alternative um, to, and a better choice. So I love that. I love that. It's all about, like you said, like better choices, not deprivation and restriction. Um, you need to be able to enjoy your life and all the things that are part of that. Um, and, right. and yeah, so I think that's a very healthy approach. So I'm, I'm very much in favor of that. Um, well, thank you for sharing all this valuable information with us. I'm definitely ready to get some wine from you. So, um, so can you tell everyone where they can find you if they want to connect or if they want to purchase wine, where's the best place to, to find you? So I have two websites, but the, um, I, the Michelle ward.com, but you, and you can go to the clean crafted wine tab on my, um, the Michelle ward.com to find out more about the wine and, um, and to uh, connect there, or you can just go to scout and backslash Michelle ward. Um, and you'll find me there as well. So, and I'd love to answer any questions or, you know, you can email me at michelle at themichellemore.com. Um, um, and so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. And I'll, I'll post your links um, in the Facebook group as well. Um, if anyone's on Zoom that has a question, go ahead and type that in the chat box and I'm going to check Facebook real quickly to see if there are any questions there. Um, and we'll go from there. Let's see here. Don't see any questions at the moment. Do I do wine tastings? Oh yeah, here's one on Zoom. Do you do wine tastings? Yes, Kalita and, and Kalita's in Dallas. So oh, yeah. Um, yes, I, that's the best way to get to spread the word is to host a wine tasting. And so um, I will like, Kalita, if you wanted to host a wine tasting for your friends, I bring the wine, you bring your friends, we do a charcuterie board or just something real easy like that. Um, and we talk about the wines, we sip the wines and it's just, you know, you take, you drink maybe an ounce or two of each wine. Um, and then, um, you know, it's an educational kind of thing, but it's a lot of fun too. So yes, I do that. Awesome. Yes. Wine tasting is definitely the way to go. That'd be a fun event. So yeah, the two of you can connect to me. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I don't think we have any other questions at the moment. So, um, so all of you listening in, definitely connect with Michelle Ward at her website, um, email her. I'll post the links in the Facebook group as well. Um, and again, thank you so much, Michelle, for mm -hmm. joining us today and sharing all of your wisdom around mm -hmm. wine. Really wine appreciate wisdom. it. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Well, all right. Well, everyone have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Bye. Bye.